On this week's video, we're going back into knockoff land. Since there's a new entry in the Conjuring Cinematic Universe coming out this week, it seemed time to check out those that sought to cash in on the franchise's popularity. On a quick note, I didn't include any of the La Llorona films, since it's hard to know what a knockoff there is, since they've been making those for like quite a while, and I'll probably do a whole video on them in the future, and truth to tell, I, I, I can't really say La Llorona right. It's not the right way to say that. Number 10. We'll start off with some nun stuff from Curse of the Nun from 2019. And, and here's the poster. So yeah, it, it's definitely a nun ripoff. This one wastes no time at all before showing us some nunny action. And this is actually shot kind of nice and has this nice little loop thing going. So maybe this won't be too bad. Then, I, and I realized that this is nitpicking, um, we meet our main character and she orders a pizza. And the delivery guy tells her that it's 2109, and she only gives him 2106, and he tells her that she's short, and then she complains. So not only did she know the exact amount and purposefully not bring enough money, she's also not tipping the guy, and then has the gall to be mad at the driver and flip him off? Okay, movie. No, right away that I am actively rooting for the nun to kill this girl. She's with this guy, and I guess the actress just looks young because I assumed that this character was her dad until they started kissing. And then she's soon stalked by Sister Catherine, who killed herself and is haunting the house that used to be a convent. And is helped by KK, who knows her whole backstory and wants to prove this spirit's existence. And, and he's actually a pretty decent actor and character and all in all, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's some good stuff in here. It's cliche, is all hell, but there's actually some inventiveness going on here and at, at least more than I'm used to for this type of movie. And like, instead of a, a cross, you can hold her back by showing her a pentagram. And then there's this sort of time loop thing going on and she, she gets a second chance to tip this guy and still screws it up. I, I don't want to overhype this one because it's, it, its budget holds it back drastically and it drags quite a bit in the middle, but I will admit to being pretty pleasantly surprised with this, so I don't know, may, maybe you will too. It's all right. Number nine. The next one on this list, this one actually a Conjuring ripoff, is 2016's American Conjuring, which was originally titled Bind, and it opens with a birthday party massacre inspired by a ghost in the basement. So a family moves into this old orphanage, and oh, oh, I haven't, I, I haven't gotten to say this in a while. Moving is the greatest terror. And they're just one of those classic movie families that are always bickering and arguing, like all the time, all, all the time. And then spoopy stuff starts happening, but they ignore it. Like the daughter vomits bugs, and no one gets that concerned. There's some decent stuff happening, and this dog that I swear looks CGI, and ultimately. With the whole family breaking down, it feels more like an Amityville ripoff than a Conjuring one, and, and things escalate, but rather slowly. It pretty much follows the Amityville formula to a T, with Dad eventually going axe crazy, but then it, it's all it's all a dream? I mean, what, what's, go, what's going on here? What with the old haunted house and the family and ghosts and all, this one seems to be the most direct ripoff of this batch, but ultimately it's more just a cliche written run of the mill horror story. And like so many others on this list, it has some clear cut pacing issues. But I find myself once again praising basic camera competency and halfway decent acting, which is about as much credit as I can give here. Number eight. So now we head into Annabelle territory with 2018's Mandy the Doll, which of course starts with a young woman receiving a package in the mail containing a creepy doll. She tells a story of Mandy the Doll and a little girl who froze to death holding the doll and her spirit went into it. And she thinks it's the same doll, so of course they keep it instead of, you know, throwing it away. So it, it, it kills them. It's shot in England, which gives me Robert the Doll vibes, which isn't a good sign. And we follow Amber here and her sister, and they're involved in a heist, so she poses as a babysitter to a child she's not allowed to see. Soon, the heist is going down, and everyone ends up trapped inside the house, and they're victims of a tiny doll. 
How this tiny doll manages to incapacitate four fully grown people, I do not know. But it did, and it moves on its own, but not so much that you don't realize that it's literally just a person below it moving it around. Like it's not a puppet or anything, it's just a doll, and they're moving it from side to side in the cheapest way possible. It's pretty slow, and it does not have a lot going for it, although at least the doll is integral to the plot, unlike... Annabelle, but it, it does feel a hell of a lot more like Robert the doll than it does the Conjuring universe. I mean, they're not just up against a tiny doll, though. They're also fighting an old lady. So, you know, you can, you can see the terror there. Number seven. Well, hey, we've already had Curse of the Nun, but how about A Nun's Curse from 2019? And is it a knockoff or just a movie about an evil nun? Let's ask the poster. So a group of young folk go on a trip together and bicker with each other non-stop and actually tells of Sister Monday who killed a bunch of inmates at a prison. The prison that our group has to seek shelter in. I should point out that this girl, this character, is the most grating person I've seen recently in horror. The actress plays her well because I think she's written to be completely and horribly unlikable and she really, really is and it's to the point of caricature that anyone that would allow this person to hang out with them is also a terrible person. When Sister Monday arrives, she may or may not have a penis, and things take way too long to happen. Uh, like, like 45 minutes into this movie, and nothing has happened at all. I mean, no one has even had a nun sighting by this point. And then finally, at just under the hour mark, we finally have something happen. And at that point, we race as quickly as we can get to the end that is so predictable that if you don't see it coming, well, congratulations on watching your very first movie, I guess. Which is a shame because for the most part, I mean, it's, it's fine. It, it's shot well, has a decent atmosphere, is acted competently, and it's so insanely boring and predictable that there's really no redeeming it. But, spoiler alert, again, it, it, it's all a dream. Is this, um, is this gonna be a theme on this list or something? Well, it's all a dream, so there, you don't have to bother watching it because none of it happened. Number six. Okay, so far we've got a pretty low success rate, but let's try our hand with Conjuring the Devil from 2020, and... <laughs> Looks like that success rate is staying low. I mean, the opening of this film is, uh, from what I can tell, a woman pole dancing herself to, to death. I know that I was hoping for a Conjuring knockoff here, but looking at the poster, it looks like it's going for two ripoffs of the price of one and knocking off the nun as well. It's some of the worst filmmaking that you can imagine. I mean, almost all of it is poorly post-dubbed. And then look at this camera work. Worst of all, many of you are defiling your bodies with the same sex. I have to think that it's partially intentional because all of the other shots are on a tripod. So I don't know why they can't keep the camera still for this one shot. So, I mean, I, I, it, I guess it's intentional. So there's this new priest who makes the town hate him by, well, I mean, just kind of saying stuff that most priests probably would say. And then he brings the curse box to their houses. And an evil nun starts showing up and causing people to kill themselves and making poorly green-screened crucifixes fly around. The evil nun is Lucrezia Bonaventure, a nun from the Inquisition, and our main character Kate here has to confront the priest to stop the nun, and there's definitely no conjuring influence here, but I guess has some from the nun? And did I, did I mention that it's an hour and 55 minutes? I mean, maybe at 40 minutes shorter, it, this could have been a passable movie. Uh, it's just just been maybe just a standard bad movie but at this length it's interminable number five next up is a double feature as we get to 2018's 
Bloody Nun, because apparently this is just a nun ripoff list now. This one has YouTuber Sean Phillips start things off with a scene that is completely unconnected to anything else in the movie, and then discount Kate Micucci, and then there's this professor and an amulet that needs six souls to release an evil. So he kills this nun by just pressing this hook to her stomach. I mean, you can clearly see that it is just sitting there. I think the dialogue is improvised. Like, it's, it's obvious that it's improvised. The other day, I went to Mocha Chocolata Yaya house. And I decided that I really, really, really want to... I wanna... love their Mocha Chocolata. Oh my god, did you, ever, did you have them iced before? Yes. Oh, oh my, my god, god. they put that They're foam so... on the top. And then with the little caramel <gasps> crunch. We're getting off topic, I'm sorry. Because, you know... <sighs> And then there's just a string of scenes of people improvising dialogue that is mostly just arguing with each other and trying to be funny and failing. And it's these really, really long takes, and it's way more painful than normal. The premise is six paranormal investigators competing to find a ghost in a haunted house, and at halfway through the movie, not only have they not got to the house yet, but we haven't met all the investigators. This is my deal. Hey, 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 no, 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 Why do you have this? You just pulled a toenail clipper on me. Why do you have Here's your baggage, Becky. Okay. Go tell your fucking dick in a nut, pal. Becky? What? I don't own a knife. Kill me! Under the trivia section of IMDb for this movie, there's a quote from the director saying that when he cast the professor in this movie, he needed the most handsome, charming, debonair man on the planet. I own this house. My family's owned this house for many generations. At about an hour into this one hour and 15 minute movie, they finally do something supernatural as they have a seance and the nun appears and it's basically a woman with little kid party paint on her face. And did I, did I just find something to rival Camp Blood 5 for the worst thing I've ever seen? You know why they call me Hunk Ghost Boy? It's because I got a big dick. Looks like that's a yes! Well, this entry continues since three years later, there was a second part. And released earlier this year was Bloody Nun 2 The Curse. Which again starts with Sean Phillips, who at least has a scene that relates to the main movie this time, even though it's still just kind of pointless crap. And then we get a straight up ripoff when they tell us that the demon taking over the nuns is named Valak, directly ripping from The Conjuring and nun movies now. And there's this priest. I've made my choice, and that was a long time ago when I decided to come here. I want to go hook up with some hot chicks. And this temptress with this fantastic special effect. And, oh yay, M Mr. Shiva is back, but they call him Sandoval here, and I think he's, I think he's supposed to be a different character? They show a couple drone flyovers of Santa Monica and California, yet keep cutting the close-ups of characters that are clearly nowhere near, like, I, I don't know where this is, but it is not the California coast. I mean, maybe, maybe Northern California possibly, but not near Santa Monica. A bunch of characters go to a brothel that's clearly just someone's house that let them shoot there. I mean, I, I don't know a ton about brothels, but I would assume that they have some security around or something. I mean, anybody working the door? It, it's, a, it's supposed to be a brothel, yet they only ever show two girls who I guess are the only ones working there, and they just mostly hang out with everyone in, in the living room. Oh, check out this cool new pimping shirt on me. Looks swazzy, yo. So why would a character just suddenly change his shirt in a brothel? Let me explain. Um, this is the sort of thing that you would have to shoot if one of your actors showed up wearing a different outfit than he was wearing in a previous scene. So you'd have to explain it. So when you see the guy wearing a shirt that he didn't have on in an earlier scene, you just say, oh yeah, he changed it in that one scene. But, but, the very next time that you see this character, he's back in the original shirt! It's just astounding levels of incompetence. When the nun shows up, they've definitely upgraded her appearance a bit, but it's still just spirit Halloween store stuff, and also clearly a guy. And although this isn't as bad as the first one, it's only about like 5% better, which is still 
nearly unwatchable. And oh look, he's, he's now in a black shirt! And, and the only thing linking this to the first is a last minute cameo from Hunk from the first one. And let me see here. Dustin Ferguson, Mark Polonia, and yep, I am now adding Will Colazzo Jr. to my list of directors that I can't stand. Number four. Next up from 2017, we have none. Just none, not, not the none. Are they all just gonna be none movies now? Is that what this has become? Like, you just you go get a nun costume from the old spirit, throw on some cheap makeup, call your movie nun something or something nun, and then just make some money? Poster check? Yep, blatant. Uh, so we have a nun having a crisis of faith, and Gracie here was involved in a terrible accident and goes back to her hometown to reunite with an old flame. There's then a series of just lengthy scenes of her walking around. Around warehouses, and then a storage facility as she gets locked in. So she wanders around some more, and then a, a little more. She wanders upstairs, and again downstairs. And I, and I wish I was exaggerating this, but an absurd amount of time is just following the actress around to the storage facility. At about an hour in, something finally happens as there's people being held captive there by a crazy person, and then the plot kicks in and this movie just goes right off a bridge. Apparently this one was originally called Crawl Space, which I mean doesn't really fit the movie either, but it's clear they changed the title to capitalize on The Nun, even though Gracie being a nun has very little to do with the movie. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing supernatural. It's just an incredibly obvious attempt to cash in on a title, which is a shame because it, it's shot really well. And I mean, the acting is it's fine, but it's just a total nothing of the movie. But at least it was a step up in film quality that I've been getting here. So I, I guess I'll, I'll take what I can get. Oh, and just like Curse of the Nun, it's apparently also a dream. So that theme is just, it's just on fire in this list. Number three. All right, moving on to another damn double feature with Anna from 2017. And it starts off by telling us that it's a true story, really going for that Annabelle rip. I mean, even with the name. Plus, I don't want to even get into how grammatically incorrect this scrawl is. I mean, my brain hurt itself just reading it. Two paranormal investigators steal an infamous doll from a museum to make a show. I'm putting the EMF detector on either sides of the crib with a KEMF. EMF detectors? That's so unbelievable. This one really tries to hang the whole movie on these two guys trying to be funny, but it just it just doesn't work. They're, they're not awful actors, but they're also not good enough to pull off what the movie wants them to. And I've noticed a recurring theme on this list of movies where everything takes a really, really long time to happen. Plus, this one is almost entirely dubbed in post very poorly, so at times it looks like you're watching an old kung fu movie. And then things finally start happening at near the one hour mark as a woman gets possessed by a demon from the doll, and they have to find it and kill it. There is a creature concept here with a woman whose face opens up, but it's unfortunately shot pretty crap, so it's hard to see what it is or what's going on with it. They kidnap a psychic to help them exercise the spirit, and this is really overly long in an hour and 40 minutes, but it's made even longer by the fact that they made a sequel to it two years later with 2019 simply called Anna 2. Which I'm watching. I'm choosing to do this of my own free will. For some reason. It's apparently subtitled Freaky Links and oh yay, Jacob and Sean are back and they've expanded their ghost hunting business, although oddly, they seem skeptical about the supernatural a bunch of times, as if they didn't encounter demons and killer dolls in the first one. They go to check out a haunted amusement park and mysterious forces are at work, and there's some, there's some decent visuals, but you're not gonna just curry my favor by putting on Sean's t-shirt, dude. Things get weird as there's next to no dialogue for a solid 15 to 20 minute portion of this movie as the characters just encounter nightmare scene after nightmare scene, but it's unfortunately not that engaging and it just kind of drags. And like the first one, it's about an hour and 40 minutes long and... Are you gonna repeat everything we say? 
I have one job. It's stupid, but I'm gonna do it. And also, you're not gonna curry favor just by quoting Galaxy Quest. And now I want curry. And yeah, it's a touch better than the first, but that's not saying a lot. It's not gouge your eyes out unwatchable, but again, not saying much. It's not even connected to the first Anna, because I guess they're going for a conjuring thing by instead focusing on the investigators, but it's freaking called Anna 2. Number 2. Alright, one more double feature here as we start talking about 2018's The Bad Nun, which is apparently also called The Satanic Nun, and poster check. Yep, pretty, pretty blatant still. This one starts with a young woman getting messaged online by someone that she apparently doesn't know, and one of the first things he asks her is to come over to his house for a drink, and she just says, yeah, and then she just, like, goes to his house. I mean, it's like she's trying to get killed. Well, she gets attacked by someone in a nun costume after being shown a little boy in 1974 in a creepy video with a nun. So, I mean, this isn't much of a mystery. Is it, is it going to be the little boy all grown up and warped by his childhood? I don't know. So we have Aisha here, who goes to an isolated B&B for a weekend, and the guy who runs it converted it, and it used to be a convent, and his mom was religious. I mean, if this guy doesn't turn out to be the killer nun, I will turn in my movie expert card. Compared to a bunch of the ones on this list, it actually feels like a real movie, even if a really predictable one. And there's a nice, tense scene at the front door that's only ruined by the fact that they put windows on either side of the door that the main character just never bothers to use. Like, if she just looked out, she would see something was amiss, but she just puts her ear up to the door the whole time. Then the big twist happens. Oh my, who could have seen that coming? What a shock. This one's a shame because it's just its just so close to being a decent movie. It, it, it's insanely predictable and has major pacing issues, but it does create a really nice atmosphere and has some some good performances, so it's not it's not a total wash. And for this list, it's downright art. Although everyone in the movie is really, really stupid, like this character who has a noose wrapped around her neck, and then when the killer goes upstairs, she doesn't like just take it off. And the killer is, I guess, able to lift her up to strangle her. And I mean, the guy's not that big. Just take the freaking noose off your neck. He's upstairs now. And wait, why does this movie have a 1987 date stamp now? Wasn't it 1974 earlier? I take it back. This one sucks too. And it actually ends on a cliffhanger of sorts, so I guess a sequel was inevitable. And sure enough, it came with 2020's Bad Nun, Deadly Vows. I guess also called Awakening the Nun which picks up with Aisha again having survived her encounter, and the nun is back somehow, who, who kills her boyfriend by placing these scissors in his mouth slightly. Look at them. What what did these do? Like, like poke his gums? Uh, I'm not sure why no one fights back against the nun here. It's literally a skinny older man in drag, but no one even tries to attack him, and Aisha still doesn't, and I, I guess just dies. We then follow Catherine and her family here, moving into an old converted church, and the nun starts showing up at their door. But is it is it our friend Dan? I mean, we recapped the events of the last film, saying he was arrested and is behind bars, so we may have a new killer. And this one at least gives us a few suspects, so the identity isn't immediately obvious. And it, it does suffer the same pacing issues as the first one, but it's definitely a bit better. Although neither of these films feels like the film that it's clearly ripping off. Number one. And now, number one on our list, and let's hope that we finish strong, right? I mean, I usually slot something in the number one spot for myself that's enjoyable and promising, and I'm sure I did that here, right? Well, from 2018, we're checking out Conjuring Curse from, um, Dustin F Ferguson. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that I meant another Dustin Ferguson, right? Not Camp Blood 4 and 5's Dustin Ferguson, not Amityville Clown House is Dustin Ferguson, right? Why would I even put that on a list of things to watch for myself, let alone at number one? 
We're told of an ancient witch through simulated old film, and of course, it's just a filter of old film stock because it's still widescreen. This happens a lot, and it's the epitome of laziness. People think that you can just make something look old-timey by just putting a filter on it without actually thinking about what you're emulating. If you want to emulate old film, make it look like old film. Like The Conjuring, we're set in the 1970s, and that's never a good sign for super low-budget movies because period settings involve money and effort. And it's as terrible as you would expect and bounces around between decades with long stretches of padding out time, like showing a highway for like two minutes straight in order to highlight a bad heavy metal song that your friends obviously wrote. <laughs> The story involves people just ending up in this house plagued by the witch and there's more padding with a heavy metal band playing a whole song with the love and, the just to and we're never told why this band who according to the dialogue is a touring band playing large shows is just stopping and staying at an abandoned house like they have to sleep on the floor of this house. I also want to point out that at the half hour mark of this movie, nothing has really happened. A bunch of kids went to the house in the 1970s and got scared, and now a bunch of rockers go in in the 1980s and get killed. No characters, no story, just crap. In the 90s, raver kids go to the house and also get killed, and again, no explanation of why a bunch of ravers would party in an old abandoned house in full gear except that they wanted to party, but as someone who actually knew 90s ravers kids, no one would go for this setting, especially if you was just you and your friends. And if it were, you certainly wouldn't get all dressed up for it like some big mega party. Then we go to 2007, and yep, all this one is, is people going to the house and dying really cheap, embarrassing ways. And what better way to convey to the audience that it's 2007 than just having your main character wear a t-shirt that says 2007 right on it. You know, like we all do. I mean, I would have been wearing my 2021 t-shirt today if it wasn't in the wash. Oh, and these are the same two people from Amityville Clown House, and at least they have microphones on them this time. They get killed as well when they go in the house, and for some reason... I feel like this is some sort of take on the grudge or something. Just unrelated stories with people entering the house and getting killed. There's no real similarity to the Conjuring universe. It just uses the name in order to try to trick you. And yeah, if you watch this one, you've been tricked. I've been tricked. We've all been tricked. I know that this is a list of ripoffs, so being tricked is kind of the whole point. But this one feels extra mean. Add this to the list of the worst things that I've had to watch for this channel. Just, just pop it right up there. It wraps in 2017 with trademark Ferguson crap sound work with, yep, another group of people in the same cursed house getting killed. The hammer searches the house. He goes out to seek his vengeance. Beats her to death with the hammer. He brings her back here and walks her up inside that closet. And this great FX work. Look at this. Wow. whoop de doo it ends with them saying the cycle of death repeats every 10 years, so hopefully I will not have to watch a follow-up on this one until 2027. So there you have it, 10 movies that are all Conjuring and Conjuring Cinematic Universe knockoffs. And yeah, I don't think I would really recommend any of these. There's a couple of them that are okay. There's a couple of these that are uh, watchable, but not ones that I would say that you should watch just if you happen to have to watch them, you won't die. Um, yeah, most of these are pretty terrible. I guess the Conjuring knockoffs uh, are the new um, Amityville Camp Blood thing for me because uh, I never want to see these again, but probably will end up doing so in the future to please you guys because I know that you like when I am in pain. Um, let me know if you've seen any of these or if you ever want to see any of these or if this has spurred any interest in them. I kind of hope not. Um, some of them are fairly funny. Um, 
but overall, just a pretty bad batch. Um, let me know what you think down below. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, please. And also check out the patrons on patreon.com. These guys over here support the channel um, on patreon.com slash movie timelines. You can as well too, you know, join our Zoom calls, be a part of Dead Last. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun, so come on and join us. In the meantime, just keep on watching the videos and we'll see you very, very shortly for another great one. Thanks guys, we'll see ya, bye-bye.